The next chapter is called Bruno Jenkins Disappears. The Grand High Witch was starting to talk again. I am now going to prove to you, she said, that this recipe is working to perfection. You understand, of course, that you cannot take the alarm clock to go off at any time you like. It does not have to be 9 o'clock. So, yesterday, I am personally preparing a small quantity of the magic formula in order to give you a public demonstration. But I am making one small change in the recipe. Before I am roasting the alarm clock, I am setting it to go off not at 9 o'clock the next morning, but at half past 3 the next afternoon. Which means half past 3 this afternoon. And that, she said, glancing at her wristwatch, is in precisely 7 minutes time. The audience of witches was listening intently, sensing that something dramatic was about to happen. So, what am I doing yesterday with this magic liquid? asked the Grand High Witch. I will tell you what I am doing. I am putting one droplet of it into a very squishy chocolate bar, and I am giving this bar to a repulsive, smelly little boy who is hanging round the lobby of this hotel. The Grand High Witch paused. The audience remained silent, waiting for her to go on. I watched this repulsive little brute gobbling up this squishy bar of chocolate, and when he had finished, I said to him, Was that good? He said, It was great. So I said to him, Would you want some more? And he said, Yes. So I said, I will give you six more chocolate bars like that if you meet me in the ballroom of this hotel at 25 past 3 tomorrow afternoon. Six bars, cried this greedy little swine. I'll be there. You bet I'll be there. So, the stage is set, shouted the Grand High Witch. The proof of the pudding is about to begin. Do not forget that before I'm roasting the alarm clock yesterday, I am setting it for half past 3 today. It is now, she glanced again at her watch, it is now exactly 25 minutes past 3, and the nasty little stinker who will be turning into a mouse in 5 minutes time should be at this very moment standing outside the doors. And by gum, she was absolutely right. The boy, whoever he might be, was already rattling the door handle and banging on the doors with his fist. Quick, shouted the Grand High Witch, put on your wigs! Put on your gloves! Put on your shoes! There was a great rustle and bustle of putting on wigs and gloves and shoes, and I saw the Grand High Witch herself reached for her face mask and put it on over that revolting face of hers. It was astonishing how the mask transformed her. All of a sudden, she became once again a rather pretty young lady. Let me in! came the boy's voice from behind the doors. Where are those chocolate bars you promised me? I'm here to collect! Dish them out! He is not only smelly, he is also greedy, the Grand High Witch said. Remove the chains from the doors and let him in. The extraordinary thing about the mask was that its lips moved quite naturally when she spoke. You really couldn't see it was a mask at all. One of the witches leapt to her feet and fastened, unfastened the chains. She opened the two huge doors. Then I heard her saying, Why, hello, little man, how lovely to see you. Oh, you've come for your chocolate bars, have you not? They're all ready for you. Do come in. A small boy, wearing a white t-shirt and gray shorts and gym shoes, entered the room. I recognized him at once. He was called Bruno Jenkins, and he was staying in the hotel with his parents. I didn't care for him. He was one of those boys who was always eating something whenever you meet him. Meet him in the hotel lobby, and he's stuffing sponge cake into his mouth. Pass him in the corridor, and he's fishing potato crisps, crisps out of a bag by the fistful. Catch sight of him in the hotel garden, and he is wolfing a dairy milk bar, and has two more sticking out of his trouser pocket. What's more, Bruno never stopped boasting about how his father made more money than my father, and that they own three cars. But worse than that, yesterday morning, I had found him kneeling on the flagstones of the hotel terrace with a magnifying glass in his hand. There was a column of ants marching across the flagstones, and Bruno Jenkins was focusing the sun through his magnifying glass and roasting the ants one by one. 
I like watching them burn, he said. Well, that's horrible, I cried. Stop doing it. Let's see you try to stop me, he said. At that point, I pushed him with all my might, and he crashed sideways onto the flagstones. His magnifying glass had splintered into many pieces, and he leapt up shrieking, My father's going to get you for this! Then he'd run off, presumably to find his wealthy dad. That was the last time I had seen Bruno Jenkins until now. I doubted very much that he was about to be turned into a mouse, although I must confess that I was secretly hoping it might happen. Either way, I didn't envy him up being up there in front of all those witches. Darling boy, crewed the Grand High Witch from up on the platform, I have your chocolates all ready for you. Do come up here first and say hello to all these lovely ladies. Her voice was quite different now. It was soft and gentle and absolutely dripping with syrup. Bruno was looking a bit bewildered, but he allowed himself to be led up to the platform where he stood beside the Grand High Witch and said, Okay, where are my six bars of chocolate? I saw the witch who had let him in, quietly putting the chain back on the door handles. Bruno didn't notice this. He was too busy asking for his chocolate. The time is now one minute before half past three, announced the Grand High Witch. What the heck is going on? Bruno asked. He wasn't frightened, but he wasn't looking exactly comfortable either. What is this? He said. Give me my chocolate. Thirty seconds to go, cried the Grand High Witch, gripping Bruno by the arm. Bruno shook himself clear and stared at her. He stared, she stared back at him, smiling with the lips of her mask. Every witch in the audience was staring at Bruno. Twenty seconds, cried the Grand High Witch. Give me the chocolate, shouted Bruno, becoming suddenly suspicious. Give me the chocolate and let me out of here. Fifteen seconds, cried the Grand High Witch. Will one of you crazy punks kindly tell me what all this is about? Shouted Bruno. Ten seconds, cried the Grand High Witch. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. We have ignition. I could have sworn I heard an alarm clock ringing. I saw Bruno jump. He jumped as though someone had stuck a hat pin deep into his bottom and he yelled, Ow! He jumped so high that he landed on a small table up there on the stage, and he started hopping about on the side of the table, waving his arms and yelling his head off. Then, suddenly, he became silent. His whole body stiffened. The alarm has gone off, shrieked the Grand High Witch. The mask maker is beginning to work. She started clapping about the platform and... And she started hopping about on the platform and clapping her gloved hands together, and then she shouted, The smelly brat, this filthy scum, this horrid little louse, will very, very, very soon become a lovely little mouse. Bruno was getting smaller by the second. I could see him shrinking. Now his clothes seemed to be disappearing, and brown fur was growing all over his body. Suddenly, he had a tail, and then he had whiskers. Now he had four feet. It was all happening so quickly. It was a matter of seconds only, and all at once, he wasn't there anymore. A small brown mouse was running around on the tabletop. Bravo, yelled the audience. She's done it. It works. It's fantastic. It's colossal. It's the greatest yet. You're a miracle, oh brainy one. They were all standing up and clapping and cheering, and the Grand High Witch produced a mouse trap from the folds of her dress and started to set it. Oh no, I thought. I don't want to see this. Bruno Jenkins may have been a bit of a stinker, but I'm dashed if I want to watch him having his head chopped off. Where is he? snapped the Grand High Witch, searching the platform. Where has that mouse gone to? She couldn't find him. Clever Bruno must have jumped down off the table and scampered into some corner or even down a small hole. Thank heavens for that. It matters not, shouted the Grand High Witch. Silence and sit down. And that's the end of the chapter. Uh. Who did we meet? Yeah, Bruno Jenkins. And what happened to poor Bruno? The Grand High Witch turned him into a mouse. That's right, she used her delayed action mouse formula and gave him a chocolate the day before. And so then today, 
When he came to meet her for more chocolates, he got turned into a mouse. What kind of a boy was Bruno? Yeah, the author says he's not, he was not very nice. He was not a very nice boy. How do you know? He was always bragging about his dad. And the little boy said he saw him roasting uh, ants with a magnifying glass. That's not very kind at all. But did the Grand High Witch catch him in a mouse trap? No, he scampered off. Okay, so now he's a mouse. Let's keep going. 